All right, this is a learning check because you've learned it previously. Um, there are three things that affect mean arterial blood pressure. And I'm gonna write out for you the things that affect those things. So here's your blanks for your learning check. Um, and then let's look at what affects each of those things. So we've got fluid intake and fluid loss. We've got heart rate and stroke volume. And then we've got diameter of our arterioles. So this is also called um, total peripheral resistance or systemic vascular resistance. It's supposed to be a P. Vasoconstriction and vasodilation can occur. So I hope you can name those three things there because we're going to refer back to them. Although we're mostly gonna focus on this one because that's what the kidneys are involved in. So let's look at an integrative response to changes in both blood pressure and osmolarity. First, let's look at the ways in which these things can change. I've mentioned this before, that we can have a change in volume that is, occurs without a change in osmolarity or we could have a change in osmolarity. So this is largely sodium concentration, although not completely, it's the solute concentration, right, in the, in the blood, largely determined by sodium. Um, so the concentration of sodium changes osmolarity. This is usually a stable thing because of osmosis but can get dysregulated and it can happen independently of changes in volume. So this is our total content in the body, fluid content, and this is our concentration. Um, the total amount of sodium does determine volume and therefore blood pressure. Um, so there's overlap between the two, but again, we can have dysregulation of them separately. So in the middle here is our normal volume and osmolarity. If we go to a change in blood pressure, blood volume, I'm sorry, which is going to change pressure, that's going to be this direction or this direction. So we could have decreased blood volume from like bleeding, hemorrhage. That's the main way to decrease just fluid volume, nothing else changing. We can have an increase in blood volume by ingesting what do you think? Regular water? No isotonic saline. That's the only way to increase blood volume without changing osmolarity. If we drink a large amount of water, regular water, we're gonna go down here because we're decreasing osmolarity. So this is ingesting water. Water is hypotonic to our cells. That probably tells you over here, this is going to be ingesting a hypertonic. So like seawater, got an extra credit assignment related to drinking seawater. So all three on this side involve drinking water of various types. Maybe I'll try to color code that with blue for water. Um, then we can have changes to osmolarity. So that, that's this way, this change in volume. We can have changes in osmolarity without changing volume. That is going these two directions. So how would we increase osmolarity? 
without changing volume, we'd eat salt. Maybe salty chips. Um, we could decrease osmolarity with no change in volume if we have, like this is a little more specific now, so sweat loss and then replaced with plain water. So because we've got ahead of a isovolumic situation, um, and a loss of sodium. So this isn't gonna be what I focus on as much, but that's a possible thing that happens. Then we've got decreases in blood volume that also change os osmolarity. So let me choose another color for this. I don't have a meaningful color to choose. Let's do green. Um, Cause it's kind of like double bad things. Um, although I would actually argue that this, this was just dehydration, like sweat loss or diarrhea. Sweat loss, probably not as big a deal as hemorrhage, although it depends on how much. So these are things that are going to increase osmolarity um, because the thing we are excreting is hypotonic. These things are both hypotonic, but we're also losing fluids. Um, so sweat is actually slightly less than 300 milliosmoles. Um, what is the tonicity? That would be interesting to look up, sweat osmolarity. Um, okay, I can't help it, I'm doing it. 120 milliosmoles. Okay, so right when you sweat, you are losing more fluid um, then you are salts because your, your plasma is 300 milliosmoles. So that's hypotonic solution that you're excreting. Okay. Lastly, we've got another one that's kind of not as um, relevant. I'm sure it is clinically. This would be if you have dehydration followed by incomplete compensation for that dehydration. So dehydration occurred, so we have a loss of blood volume, but then um, we're not adequately replacing um, the, the salts. So we have a decrease in, in both things there. We are going to look at, so what you can see here, it gets crazy complicated with the overlap and the various responses your body has to these different stimuli. We have kidneys, endocrine system, cardiovascular system, digestive system responding to these situations and responding often in dynamic ways depending on the various stimuli. Um, so we're gonna be looking at changes in blood volume, which we already have, right? Changes in blood volume overall uh, changes in osmolarity overall. And then we'll look at some of these sub compartments as well, um, but not every single one. Part of the big picture is that it gets crazy complicated because your systems are overlapping and trying to compensate and this dynamic, amazing process that your body is trying to um, do is complicated. Okay, I'm gonna pause here, draw out our responses to decreases in blood pressure and increases in osmolarity in the start of the next video.